Woodrow Wilson, this is a laundry list of why Woodrow Wilson is no good. So Woodrow Wilson, what, he was like the president of this nation for so many years. Let me just get a general analysis of this guy. But the two biggest reasons, he puts Eugene Debs in jail for speaking out against World War One, against the draft. And what do, we talk, what do we think about the draft today? Who gets drafted for the Iraq War? Who got drafted for any of these wars that we're in now? Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan? Nobody. In fact, the, some people say let's reinstitute the draft because that's when opposition to the war was the highest. When rich kids had to go die for the same, you know, BS that all the uh, poor kids or the struggling kids, then that's when people actually stood up against the war. When you look at how sanitized the Iraq War is compared to Vietnam War, the Vietnam War, they were, you know, in there. They were in the jungle. They were showing all the horrible footage of all the things that were going on. So it looked like war is hell. It looked like war is bloody and horrific, and it destroys lots of people's lives. But we don't have that. We don't see the American coffins draped with the American flags coming back over here, and we don't see any of the bombs and the destruction and the people who are getting harmed and hurt, uh, at least not here in the in mass media land. So Woodrow Wilson, he's the a president from 1913 to 1921, so he served two terms. He's known as the progressive era of presidents. You had Teddy Roosevelt, then you had you know Woodrow Wilson, and then... Um, I guess those are the two main ones. But he's an American politician, academic. He served for two terms, 1913, 1921. 28th president, born in Staunton, Virginia. Spent his early years in Augusta, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina. Earned a Ph.D. in political science at John Hopkins University. Served as a professor. Okay, so there's a little bit general of what, what's, who's it's of Woodrow Wilson. What, who's it's. So Eugene Debs, Eugene Debs speaks out against World War I, and, and there's one line that I particularly remember when he said that it's always the oppressor class, it's always the master class who declares the war, and then it's the bottom classes that fight the war, and it's always been like that because the regular people don't want war. It makes me think of, uh, in the very beginning of World War I, they had a truce. It was the Christmas truce. So you had German soldiers and French soldiers, English soldiers. And you had the opposing sides, and it was Christmas. They started singing Christmas hymns, and then they started hearing each other sing Christmas hymns. They got up, they started singing together, they started playing soccer, and there was a bunch of uh, clips in the newspapers and that circulated widely because it was a Christmas Day truce. They got to see the, each other as themselves. They Instead of having this trench warfare with all this gas and us killing a whole bunch of people. And I want to talk about World War One more later on, like what are the causes of it. But let's get down this laundry list. So he puts Eugene and Debs in jail for speaking out against World War One for 10 years. While he's in jail, he contacts a cardiovascular disease, which eventually kills him. So Woodrow Wilson kills Eugene Debs. He murders him. He kills him. In fact, Eugene Debs runs from jail in 1920 and gets a million votes. So he was a socialist, ran for president for, you know, five times. He was also part of the Pullman strikes, and he was, um, you know, he was pro-labor. He was pro-labor, and he wanted to have a better country. Eugene Debs would have been the greatest president that we would have ever had. And we should have listened to him, frankly. World War One didn't do anything for us. Woodrow Wilson helped the rise of J. Mitchell Palmer and J. Edgar Hoover. And, you know, that's the FBI, right? J. Edgar Hoover tells uh, Martin Luther King to go kill himself. J. Mitchell Palmer with the Palmer raids because of the Red Scare. Oh, my God, there's some leftist politicians and possible communists, so we need to... It was kind of crazy when you look at the history. The Germans, there was a German revolution that came up from under Germany when they got into the, you know, World War One In Russia, there was a revolution that came from underneath the Russian leaders, too. So the rest of the world seems to be having this revolutionary fervor, but here in America, our revolutionary fervor is tampered down. On the birth of a nation, Woodrow Wilson said that it was like writing history with lightning, and my only regret is that it is also terribly true. So he looked at the birth of a nation where the whites were being oppressed by the blacks, and then the glorious KKK came up and saved the day. That's what the movie Birth of a Nation is about. It was made by D.W. Griffith, and he's actually a Kentuckian, and supposedly it's an epic, so all of his sort of splicing and editing tactics are, you know, was supposed to be important. But it, it changed culture. It was like a tour de force. It started lots of race riots and attacks after it was shown the NAACP try to protest and, you know, try to stop it. But he looked at it and he was like, yeah, that's, that's totally how history is. 
First there was the Civil War, then black people had all the power, white people were the new slaves, and then it took the glorious KKK to save, um, you know, the rest of the whites. And then you had Espionage Act, and Edward Snowden was charged with two felonies from the Espionage Act. This comes from Woodrow Wilson, the Sedition and Espionage Act. Emma Goldman is deported also because of the Espionage Act. On the day that it was passed, she was arrested. So the Espionage Act was used to attack leftist radicals and communists. So Emma Goldman, Emma Goldman, Eugene Debs, these are absolute titans, okay? The people might say they were, you know, uh, before their day or before their history. These were geniuses. They were so smart, and yet they were, you know, put in jail or deported. When we need these people, we need this valve to, you know, make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. If we're, you know, if we're, if we have group think, if everybody goes along with the group and nobody is there to say, hey, stop. Well, that's who Emma Goldman is. That's who Eugene Debs was. And they would be the greatest presidents, the greatest leaders ever. I still am inspired by the things that Emma Goldman says today. He began the Federal Reserve. So I'm a little mixed on this because whenever right-wingers are sitting there saying the same things that I'm saying, I get a little nervous about that. You know, uh, I'm against empire. So when they complain about Benghazi, I think they're complaining because they want more empire and I want less. So I'm not for sure about the Federal Reserve. They complain about it, too. But it's a central bank that's not a central bank. It's privately owned. We're not allowed to audit it. We don't know what the heck is going on. It's a very complicated scheme. And I think all those things combined makes me suspicious of it. It's essentially our central bank. And I think a central bank could work. I think it could be beneficial to the United States, a central bank. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it uh, increases the centralization and it increases the... Uh, you know, who controls the monetary policy. And in the long run, you know, that's the American dollar, the way they've set up the monetary system, global monetary system has helped us. But with the SDR and with the baskets and the renminbi and all that, uh, right now there's, you know, the China is going to be joining in the global Federal Reserve currency, um, you know, their monetary thing, in like 13 days. And so it's really complicated, and I don't think people are really paying attention to it too much. Before, it was always silver and gold. That was what the, you know, solid foundations of these things were. But, um, so the Federal Reserve, I'll put that in the list. He invaded Haiti in 1915. It started a two decades long occupation, 1915 to 1935. He invaded Veracruz, Mexico, April 9th, 1914, as a response to the Tampico affair. So supposedly we're saying, you know, he was elected because he kept us out of war, but he invaded Haiti, he invaded Mexico, and so he's an imperialist. He just can't wait to invade, you know, the uh, Germany, the, you know, Axis powers in World War One. We were only in there for a year and a half. The War of 1812 was actually longer than our involvement with World War One. And then a lot of people say that because of the crushing reparations that was put on Germany, that's what caused Hitler. So, you know, Woodrow Wilson, the way he crushed Germany, I think they were jealous that Germany was strong. Germany was a big empire. And what happened with World War I? Let me get to the last thing here. Woodrow Wilson said that God is speaking through him. Okay, great. He's an agent of God. He's a prophet of God, too. You know, anytime you get, you know, around people like that, that's... That makes me nervous, what God's talking to you directly, just specifically just to you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. That seems a little far-fetched. <laughs> uh, first of all, there is no God. There is no invisible man. And you're saying that person's talking to you, okay? And what's he saying? Bomb a bunch of people. Okay, well, okay, well, interesting. Uh, so, you know, automatically he's got a, a screw loose. And um, and so let's go to World War One. So what is the point of World War One? The point of World War One was the Serbians had attacked the Austrian Hungarians because they wanted to, you know, uh, smash down Serbia. And the Serbian government was a part of it. They financed it, the Black Hand or whatever, what have you. But Serbia killed the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and then that precipitates the entire war. A lot of people want to point out the Zimmerman telegram, the sinking of the USS Lusitania. Well, we had weapons on the U.S. S. Lusitania. So we put weapons on the U.S. Uh, S. Lusitania, and we were sending it to Britain. Germans should have sunk that boat because we were supplying them with weapons. And um, and it was in the newspapers. Everybody knew the threat. And then the Zimmerman Telegraph was Zimmerman from the German uh, leadership goes to Mexico and says, hey, if you ally with us, then we'll help you get the United States back. And so this was, you know, it was an existential threat. 
the Germans won an empire. They had a strong industrial base, so they were making money. They were a brand new power on the world scene. And um, ever since they unified in 1871 under Otto von Bismarck, and so with Serbia, what does this have to do with Serbia and the Austrian, um, you know, Hungarian Empire? What's that have to do with Russia? What's it got to do with France and Britain? It's between the Serbians and the Austrian Hungarians. That's what World War One started out as being. Austria, Hungary said, "No, Serbia, you're under our domain, and you do as the hell as we as we say." They, he's driving around in his little golf cart or whatever around town, and it's the Austrian Hungarians, and they thought that they owned Serbia, and so a Serbian nationalist, a person who's like, you know, free Serbia, he he essentially, it's you know, they said that there were some people behind him, but it just it was one guy runs up to him and he shoots him. And, you know, that was that was sort of the end of that. And then the Austrian-Hungarian Empire uh, dissolved in the long run. And so I think that's a good thing, frankly. I mean, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, why do we have any of these empires? A lot of these countries, France and Britain, they started out with royal families. They just had a ruling monarch. And so these ruling monarchs became, you know, the king. And then once they were able to, by conquest, they bought an army, they had some money, bought an army, and then they were able to conquer our country or conquer some land. And then, ever since then, their children would run the country after they had died. This is a horrible system. First of all, why were you even the king? Oh, because you killed a whole bunch of people, and therefore you're the one with the biggest gun, and you murdered most people. And then, after they did that, then the kid who had been living in the castle forever, all of a sudden, inherits the entire kingdom. So that's the defense of the papal monarchy system, was that it's good for the nation. All of France had one face, King Louis the Sixteenth, until he got his head chopped off. And then the czars with Russia, and, you know, going down the line. The Austrian-Hungarians were the exact same, Franz, Joseph, um, and then you had Carl, Carl something, Emperor Carl. So this, you know, Franz Joseph, he controls, you know, Austrian Empire, whatever that was. It changes shapes. There's so many wars and battles. They send the peasants out to go fight them. The king never dies. Um, eventually there was his... Either his mistress or his wife or his son's wife, he, she got killed, uh, Princess Sophia. But that, that's an anarchist. An anarchist, um, Princip Gavrilo Princip, assassinates the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which had been like the vice president. So when Franz Joseph died, he would become the new king. And, um, and that's what is, it, it, once that happened, then Austrian Hungarian gives the Serbia an ultimatum submit to us or else we're invading. Then the Russians are getting ready, the Germans are getting ready, and then this uh, system of alliances. Once one jumped in one side, then they had a bunch of their buddies that would jump in. And then it just turned into a huge mess. So once the Austrian Hungarian issued the ultimatum to Serbia, Serbia rejected it, and then Austrian Hungary Empire invades Serbia. And so that's what starts all of World War One. this conflict between Serbia and the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. They wanted Serbia to heal. Serbia didn't want to heal. Now, some people say the Germans had tried to push the Austrian-Hungarians to fight um, into them. There's, you know, different interpretations of that because some people say that they only said that they had their back so they wouldn't join. They, no, don't jump in, but they're like, oh, well, they got our back so we could join in anyways. But just because somebody says they have your back, that doesn't give you the, you know, um, it doesn't say do it or don't do it. It just means you got a buddy in the fight. And uh, so that's that's how Germans, Germany's involvement was in it. And then they had all the, you know, the, um, the U-boats. And so they were, you know, they were getting better. They had the airplanes. They had um, the submarines. And so they were getting, the, they were rising in technology. They were an industrial power. And that was the fear of Germany was that they were going to take over the world, and here Woodrow Wilson was like, no, I wanted to take over the world. I mean, I took over Haiti, I took over Mexico, I want to take over the whole world. And uh, so he jumps into the foray, and then he tries to organize the League of Nations, and then even our own Congress voted to not even be a part of it, even though the rest of the world had joined up with it. So that's essentially what, you know, why did we pick Britain over Germany? Well, the, the British Empire, weren't they the ones that killed a whole bunch of us, War of 1812 and the American Revolution, and we're going to side with them? It's like we don't even remember our history. It's like, wait a second, they were the ones that, the, they oppressed the crap out of us. They were the main oppressors. But instead we inherit that legacy of oppression and empire. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, it's like, it's like fighting your father or something, and now he's an old crippled man, and then you're like, well, even though you were bad and what you did to me was bad because I rebelled against you, now you respect me, maybe we could be best friends. 
I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea. It, um, you know, you fought against me, and you were oppressing me the whole time, so why would I want to be friends? That seems uh, crazy. That's, uh, no, no, you can't do something like that. Instead, I'm going to be for the people. I'm going to be for the oppressed. I'm going to be with the Haitian Revolution and the French Revolution. I'm not going to go with my British, you know, oppressors anymore. And, um, yeah, so that's where I see World War One. So what was our involvement? Why did we jump in? I don't think it's very clear who was the aggressor, who wasn't the aggressor. I think we just had a better friendship with the British, and so therefore we backed the British and joined in them. Now, we eventually won, right? Eventually the, the victors are us, and then the Kaiser uh, concedes, and then they put these horrible reparations, you know, upon Germany afterwards. But um, I don't think it was that clear who was, the, who was the bad guy, who was the good guy, especially since they had to do with Serbia and Austrian-Hungarian. And then eventually the Austrian-Hungarian Empire dissolved. It dissolved. It, it was existed no more. And I think it's a good thing. An empire based upon royal aristocracy. Oh, my granddaddy's granddaddy, he conquered everybody by conquest. That's why all this land is for me. Uh, no, that's not a good enough explanation. Get some democracy. Let's all vote and uh, decide who we want our kings and queens to be. Or maybe why don't we just take the power for ourselves and get into, you know, Soviets and working class groups and make decisions, you know, um, between us. Let's, let's go that direction. You want to try that direction? Let's do that. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson, you know, he's an imperialist. He jumps into, Wood, Wood, you know, just World War I because of World War I. That's where you get the Espionage Act, which is what Edward Snowden is being charged with. Emma Goldman was deported because of the uh, Espionage Act. He started the Federal Reserve. He desegregated the federal government, so he undid a lot of reconstruction policies, but there's a lot of uh, black and white folks that were working side by side in the federal government. Well, he undid that, and he said it was for the black folks' benefits, which is, that's a bunch of bull. Um, so he loved the birth of a nation. The Ku Klux Klan came to save, saved everybody, desegregated. Um, or wait, desegregated or resegregated, not desegregated, resegregated the federal government. And so he made sure black and white was separate. And this is after he says, you know, Birth of a Nation is the greatest movie he's ever seen. He helps with the Palmer raids, J. Mitchell Palmer. J. Edgar Hoover was one of his uh, right wing, you know, uh, uh, assistants. And so J. Edgar Hoover comes up out of the Palmer office and becomes the head of the FBI. So J. Mitchell Palmer started these Palmer raids against the leftists and the communists. Now we don't have any labor movements. Now we don't have any labor movements. We don't have any. Where does America go now? We've only been purely capitalist for about 100 years. The labor movement, 7% in unions, it's not even a. It, it's almost like. It's laughable to even think that there's ever been any type of leftist or socialist anything in this country because it's all right-wing capitalist imperialism. When hasn't it been? You know, we have homeless people on the streets because we don't care about them. We don't care about them, and that's the collective we. I do, but I'm only limited in what I can do for them. But I care. I want the, you know, I mean, we're the wealthiest nation in the world. We have 22 empty houses for every homeless person that we have. All we need is for a government or somebody to actually give a crap and to get those homeless people in those houses. But we'd have to give a crap. But that's not us. That's not who we are as a people. Do our thing, make our money, and then laugh at the poor people so that way we feel better better than somebody else. So uh, when it comes to putting Eugene Debs in jail, when it comes to deporting Emma Goldman, when he loves the birth of a nation, he helped the J. Mitchell Palmer and his Palmer raids go after the socialist. He got us into World War One, which helped get the Espionage, pa Espionage Act passed, which is what Edward Snowden is being charged with today, even though, you know, his argument is he got information by the American government and gave it to the American press, and the American press told the American people. So if the American people and the American press didn't need to know the information about the government, and they're saying we're criminals, no, we're being run by a bunch of psychopathic criminals. We're being run by criminals, because the American people has a right to know what the heck is going on. And Obama says an orderly, well, we needed an orderly process. Yeah, if you're the main oppressor, yeah, I guess you want an orderly process. But, you know, it's just like uh, LBJ. You have to be forced to do it. You're fighting a war in Vietnam, so you don't want to integrate, do you? So it took Martin Luther King to force him to actually get the Civil Rights Act passed. So Emma Goldman's deported. Uh, the Espionage Act, the Federal Reserve invading Haiti, invading Veracruz. And last but not least, he was God was talking to him. So there's a whole list of why Woodrow Wilson is no good.
and uh, resegregated the federal government. It was not set. The federal government wasn't segregated. He resegregated. No, let's let's go back to the way things were, where we you know separated things. So because he did that, it took till 1960s before we actually got some integration. So Woodrow Wilson, just all around bad guy. I don't even know what we could say is good about him. I'd love to hear somebody that actually says, "Well, Woodrow Wilson, he did this and he did that." You know what? He helped create Hitler. He threw uh, Eugene De Je Debs in jail and wound up killing him. He she he deported Emma Goldman, one of the greatest. You know, basically the greatest people that are in American history. Woodrow Wilson helped to destroy. That's not a good guy. That's a bad guy. And the fact that he's, he can't wait to invade these countries, Haiti and Mexico, and then he jumps into World War One, the League of Nations, he wants to rule the world. That's the reason why he jumped into it, because uh, Germany was going to rule the world before him, and he was jealous. So he jumped in out of jealousy and then said, we're going to make the world safe for democracy, right? Well, he was against democracy. He's taken away all of our, uh, you know, uh, civil rights and civil liberties. And, um, and we're supposed to believe that he cares about democracy because Eugene Debs spoke out against the draft. Nah, Woodrow Wilson sucks, and Woodrow Wilson also uh, made sure we were all singing the national anthem. That was mandated. We're all going to sing the national anthem because Woodrow Wilson said that we're going to. So wonderful, good old wonderful Woodrow Wilson. Shut up, sit down, and then, you know, sit your ass down for that national anthem. Be obedient. Be blindly loyal to your Fuhrer. And don't question them. That's why we have the Espionage Act and the Sedition Act. Don't you question the draft. Don't you question. People come back from World War One very much disheartened. After World War Two, we conquered fascism and Hitler, so a lot of people came back from World War Two feeling like they did something good. This was not the case with World War One. After World War One, people were very much uh, unhappy, not knowing why they did what they did, for just to fight for an inch of land. All their friends were getting gassed, trench warfare, so they're fighting for an inch of land, inch of land, take a hill to here, take a hill there. Why were they doing that? Why were they part of that? Why were they in that, you know, that mix, that mix, that whole mess, that quagmire? And then, you know, for black people, they got, you know, they came back, and then there was race riots, the race riots at Tulsa, and then black folks, they were like, well, we've just fought for America's freedom, and then we come back here to do this. Well, it turns out World War One wasn't fighting for America's freedom. It had nothing to do with America's freedom. It wasn't a war to end all wars, um, but that's the rhetoric we still use today. We need to give uh, Iraq some democracy. We need to give Somalia and all these other countries some democracy. We have, been, we have to declare a global war on terror to stop all the terror, except for the terror that we perpetuate. But then, well, okay, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> ugh, get out of here. So, yeah, birth of a nation is not writing history with lightning. We should uh, integrate the federal government. The espionage is stupid. Bring Edward Snowden back home and put him upon the cabinet. Make him, you know, the chief minister of information or the chief minister of uh, technology, the Internet. Make sure we have freedom when it comes to the Internet. Um, the Federal Reserve, I want to look a little bit more into that, but uh, it doesn't sound good to me. It needs to be audited fiat currency, just uh, making all that money out of the void. I don't, that doesn't sound too secure with me. The whole world is banking on us, failing. You know, they got a plan B. I don't even know what's our plan B. A Great Depression happens, what's your plan B? What are you going to do? Have you thought about this? Let's say your Federal Reserve System doesn't work. What are you going to do? Now, you haven't thought about it. You don't even know about the Federal Reserve System, do you? Except for that, you know, you, the right-wingers don't like it. But uh, why don't they like it? Because they want all the rich people to do as they want to do. So, yeah. There's a... Uh, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson sucks.